Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 62, we'll take a look at various enterprise architecture strategies and what those really mean. When we talk about an enterprise architecture strategy, those strategies really describe the overall enterprise architecture team structure. In other words, is it a centralized team? Is it dispersed among business units? And also how standards not only are defined, but also governed across the enterprise or each business unit and across teams. Let's talk a little bit about what those standards really mean because there's four types of standards that could be defined and also governed by enterprise architecture teams. The first of those are technology standards, things like platforms and databases, operating systems, different products and frameworks. These could be standardized across the entire enterprise within each business unit or even within teams. The second kind of standard which might be created and governed by enterprise architect teams is also the architecture standards. Architecture standards primarily in terms of the way we document or diagram our architectures, the way we document our architecture decisions. For example, the use of architecture decision records, ADRs, and what sections are standardized within those. The third kind of standard which might be defined by enterprise architects are also, also those methodology standards. Um, whether it's lean or some sort of SDLC or even an agile kind of methodology. And within these methodologies, what are the variances within those? And finally, the process kind of standards. The way we develop software, the way we release software, and those kind of processes and Again, documentation and the, what's necessary, what's not. Within the enterprise architecture strategies, there are two main types of strategies that exist. And within those, uh, two in each of these categories. And so really what we have are centralized strategies and decentralized strategies. Centralized strategies are those that really get its name from the fact that there's a single enterprise architecture team creating, applying, and governing all of those standards across the enterprise. The first of these is something called the prescriptive strategy, the most basic. This is also called the classic strategy as well, where enterprise architecture teams create and govern these standards and apply these across every business unit and every team within the company. The other centralized one is called classic alternatives. Now here, we still have a single enterprise architecture team. However, unlike the prescriptive, this team provides alternatives, hence the name classic alternatives, so that business units and teams within those business units can make choices on their own about which approved standards they're going to use for a particular problem. Now, on the other side of the coin, what we have are decentralized strategies. The decentralized strategies is where we don't have a single enterprise architecture team defining and governing those standards across our company. Rather, those enterprise architecture teams are distributed across the business units. And let's take a look at the two decentralized strategies. The first is something called a distributed strategy. Notice here that there still are minimally applied enterprise standards across the company. However, each business unit is now free to define their own standards and govern their own standards. And then finally, the durable interface strategy, where there really are no enterprise standards. However, the only common standard in the durable interface strategy across the company is how the business units all interface and interact with one another. However, all of the decisions about creating, applying, and governing those architecture standards are all distributed to each business unit. The significance of these strategies is choosing the wrong one can sometimes cause a company not only to fail, but also not to grow or not to be able to achieve their goals. It is essential that not only understanding these different strategies, but validating which one is right for your particular company. What we're going to do in the next four lessons 
is take a detailed look at each of these various enterprise architecture strategies. We're going to find out examples, what they're really about, uh, details about them, and also kind of where we would apply these standards and where they're actually not useful for. We're going to see some pros and cons, alternatives, the good and bad about each of these kind of strategies. Then we're going to have a lesson or two where we kind of wrap up the whole enterprise architecture strategy piece with some example exercises that we can actually apply to actually see these strategies in action. So for more information, the first place you can go is lesson 49 in my website, developer2architect.com. What is enterprise architecture? This will give you a good grounding about enterprise architecture, what it is, what are some of the goals of enterprise architecture. Also, all of these lessons, of course, are in Software Architecture Monday portion of my website under developer2architect.com slash lessons. Also, I do private training um, in Software Architecture, also microservices, and also analyzing software architecture. And you can find out more about those private training classes on my website, developer2architect.com slash training. And finally, I do have a lot of upcoming events where I'm speaking at uh, public trainings, uh, maybe conferences and also online training. And you can see where those kind of events are by going to my website, Upcoming Events. So this has been Lesson 62, Enterprise Architecture Strategies. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Uh, stay tuned because the next four lessons will actually be going into details about each of those four strategies and then wrapping things up. So thank you so much for listening.